Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will discuss implementation of a CAPTCHA. The agenda of the tutorial, first I will discuss about CAPTCHA basics. Then I have introduced a reflection spot where the participants are requested to go through the quiz. Then I will discuss about the program logic, how the CAPTCHA is to be implemented. And then the participants are requested to explore other forms of CAPTCHA. So let us first understand what we mean by CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. It is primarily used to prevent denial of service attacks on various websites. You might have seen CAPTCHA at numerous places. These are some of the examples of CAPTCHA. As you see, the CAPTCHA is generated in a truly random manner. This helps CAPTCHA to be protected. Even if the attacker gets the program code, attacker will not be able to guess what is the next CAPTCHA generated as the next CAPTCHA generated will be truly random. So now I have introduced a reflection spot where I have created a Moodle demo course on Moodle Cloud. The details I have given here. The students are requested to pause the video. Go to this Moodle Cloud. Go to Demo Course CSS and log in using username and password given here and take the reflection quiz. So now that you have taken the quiz, let us now understand the logic of implementing this CAPTCHA program. As I told you, the CAPTCHA is generated in a randomized manner. So what we'll do is first we generate a random number R1 and we'll restrict the value to be less than 10 and this R1 will become our CAPTCHA size. Then we generate random number R2 Again, we restrict the value to be less than 10 and this R2 will decide whether our next symbol in the CAPTCHA is going to be a digit or an alphabet. What we will assume, if the value of R2 is less than 6, we will append the next CAPTCHA symbol as a digit. Else, if it is more than 6, then we will assume that the next CAPTCHA symbol is going to be an alphabet. If R2 is less than 6, then we generate the next R3, random R3 in the range 0 to 9 and we append that in our CAPTCHA string. Else, a random R3 is generated in the range 1 to 26 and that is converted to an alphabet and that is appended in the CAPTCHA string. So this way we go on generating one one CAPTCHA symbol at a time, either it can be a digit or an alphabet and continue step 2 and step 3 until all the symbols of CAPTCHA are generated and the size of the CAPTCHA is given by our random number R1. So I request all the students now to explore other forms of CAPTCHA after implementing this program and executing this program. Thank you.